Today we're talking about whether you need a full frame camera for your landscape photography. We're going to take a look at full frame cameras versus APS-C cameras versus Micro Four Thirds cameras. So on a recent workshop, an attendee suggested that I talk a little bit about whether you needed a full frame camera to do landscape photography on my channel. And you know, I sat there and thought about it and I thought, you know, that's a good thought. It's real easy to come trapped in thinking you need a certain camera, a certain camera type in order to do landscape photography. And that's just not true. There's so much else to landscape photography that the camera is not the most important tool. As a landscape photographer, camera choice can influence the quality of your image, but it's not the only component and there are several skills that are more important. And while I love to talk about camera gear, I talk about here on my channel, I've talked about my Nikon cameras and I've talked about various Micro Four Thirds cameras and how I use those out in the field. I talk about those things because it's just simply fun to do between sessions of being able to go out and photograph. So while you're not able to photograph, you might study other pictures, you might read about the tools you use in the field, looking at camera bodies, looking at camera specs, looking at lens filters, what lens filters the best, which one's going to work the best for you, what stop do you need. It's all ways to keep us engaged with photography between actually being able to go out and photograph things. But if you find this talk of gear is impacting you or making you feel down about your photography because you don't have the right camera, well, let's correct that because there's several skills that go into landscape photography that will have greater impacts on your photography than the camera you're using, whether it be camera brand or camera sensor size. Those skills you can practice with any camera and all of which will do more to improve your landscape photography than just simply upgrading the camera or going from a micro four thirds camera to a full frame camera or something along those lines. So let's take a quick look at what I consider the three more popular camera body sizes with their varying sensors. And that's the full frame camera with the full frame sensor, an APS-C camera, which has a bit of a smaller sensor in it, and then a micro four thirds camera, which has an even smaller sensor in it. I've sort of left a couple off the list, not really looking at medium format cameras, and I'm not really looking at compact cameras. Both are also viable options and have their advantages and disadvantages. But for this video, I'm gonna focus in on those three because that's what a newer photographer to the field is more apt to run into out of the gate. So first up, let's talk about the full frame cameras. This is the camera everybody wants to be using, it seems. This is one people aspire to, or if they don't have one, this is the one they say, well, I do okay, but I don't have a full frame camera. It's sort of the standard, and when we talk about some of the other cameras, a lot of times you'll still start to hear the reference full frame equivalent, because people tend to reference focal lengths, depth of fields, to what is it like on a full frame on the different cameras. So let's take a look at the full frame camera, and today I've got this just Nikon Z7 II. This is a mirrorless, but it applies to full frame DSLRs, applies across camera brands, but the sensor in a full frame camera is a little larger, allowing it to capture more light, which helps boost the image quality. Their depth of field is a little shallower due to the size of the sensor, and they can do a little better in low light because the sensor is obviously catching more light, so it's able to do slightly better in low light conditions. The dynamic range on a full frame camera tends to be just a little greater because you're able to catch those dark tones, all the way to the brighter tones in one shot. That range is bigger than you might get on something with a smaller sensor. So those are just some of the things that contribute to the full frame being associated with a higher quality image, maybe a little easier to capture images in the field because of the size of the sensor. So full frames tend to be a little more expensive because you've got more sensor electronics in there. The camera body itself with mirrorless has started to shrink back down again, but they can be bigger than the other two types of cameras on the list. And that's why you tend to see people more move up towards them because unless you know you're going to stick with this hobby right out of the gate, it can be a little hard on the budget to start right out with a full frame camera unless it's what you really know what you want to go with. So for the majority of my landscape photography, I do find myself using a full frame camera. It's my regular carry. If I know I'm going out to really work on building portfolio images or I'm traveling specifically for landscape photography, it's going to be my full frame Nikon cameras that go with me. That's just simply because I've been doing photography long enough to know this is something I want to invest my money in and I just want to have that full frame camera to do so just so it does make some things easier. The increased dynamic range is nice. The megapixels that you can get out of a full frame camera is nice. Those are nice to have. It's not fully required but it's those things whenever you engage in an activity or a hobby that you really get into you do start to try to push that envelope to get into those things that are just slightly nicer or I won't even say nicer but something that can make your process of capturing images a little easier while you're out in the field and produce great results. 
So next up on the list, an APS-C camera body. And this is one a lot of people get started with. They were especially popular in DSLR days. There's a lot of entry-level kits where you got a fully nice professional camera, but they used the crop sensors, the APS-C sensor inside of them. Because the sensor's a little smaller, captures a little less light, they don't do quite as good in low light conditions because it's not capturing quite as much light, doesn't have quite as much of a quality data as a full frame sensor. With that said, an APS-C camera is fully capable camera and can still pr produce stunning images. Things to be aware of with an APS-C camera is that there is a thing called crop factor. So when you put a lens on it, a lot of things that get compared to a, a full frame camera. So like you have a 50 millimeter lens that's assumed to be on a full frame can camera. If you put that on an APS-C camera, then there's usually a crop factor either multiplying that focal length by 1.5 or 1.6. So it's gonna act more like a 75 millimeter because the sensor's smaller inside the camera. And so there's things to be aware about like that when you pick out camera lenses and things, the depth of field is slightly greater than you get in a full frame. Again, that's increasing on the smaller sensor. But some of the advantages of the APS-C is they're frequently more affordable, don't cost as much money as the full frame camera. So they can be a great entry into the market or if you're just looking for something a little smaller, a little more compact, they can be a great choice for either their weight or carrying. And again, these cameras will still capture excellent images. I don't have a great one to demonstrate to show you for that one because I have sold off my older crop sensor bodies. I do still use one, it's my video camera right now, a Nikon Z30, but I can't show that to you right at the moment because it's recording me right now. So when I came back to photography seven, eight years ago and got back into landscape photography, an APS-C camera was what I picked up and started using. It was an older Nikon D3100, which is a crop sensor camera, came with some kit lenses, and it gave me everything I needed to get out there and start shooting with. I used that camera a lot. In fact, my most sold image was photographed off of that older camera. So even though it was an older camera, and a crop sensor camera, it was still able to produce images that people found desirable, wanted to look at, and wanted to purchase. So don't let using an APS-C camera hold you back in your photography. The other, it allows you to build the really important skills of landscape photography that will actually do more to progress your photography than buying or upgrading to a full frame camera. And next up in the list of cameras I'm gonna talk about is the Micro Four Thirds camera. And I talk about Micro Four Thirds cameras frequently on this channel as I tend to go between either the full frame cameras and I'm really out full portfolio building, landscape photography, travel, things like that. But when I'm doing like more exploratory hikes or if I'm traveling with the family, I like to take these Micro Four Thirds cameras because they're very powerful. I can still get quality images off of them, but they take up much less space. Their sensor size is much smaller. It's smaller in the full frame. It's smaller than the crop sensor APS-C cameras, and that helps their body be much smaller and helps shrink the size of the lenses. So it really contributes towards being a lightweight, packable package if you get into the Micro Four Third systems. So we've talked about crop factor on the APS-C cameras. Well, the crop factor on a Micro Four Thirds camera is actually two times. So if I put a 50 millimeter lens on a Micro Four Thirds camera, it's actually acting like a 100 millimeter full frame equivalent. So you're getting extra reach with it, which can be advantageous because it lets you get the extra reach without necessarily the big lens to go with it. That also impacts depth of field, which is also twice that of a full frame camera. So sort of handy for landscape photographers where we like to have things in focus from front to back of the image, you get additional depth of field off of a micro four thirds camera. So like a five, six f-stop becomes more like an f11 in regards to depth of field. Pretty handy out in the field because you're getting the light capturing ability of 5.6 but the depth of field of f11. Pretty handy. Like I said, reasons I like the Micro Four Thirds and why I talk about them and why I own them is because of their packability and lightweightness. This can easily pack in with another two lenses into a small little bag and I can take it on a family trip. And as long as you're aware of their limitations or how things are different, they can still produce absolutely great images. I've captured several images off of Micro Four Thirds cameras that I've also seen sale um, or been included in my calendar and things like that. So they can also totally produce nice images. And when I say disadvantages knowing how they work. So one of the things between a full frame and all the way down to Micro Four Thirds is dynamic range. We talked earlier, a full frame camera has a bigger dynamic range and capture more range from the dark tones to the high tones than the Micro Four Thirds camera is. It's a little diminished on this and it's where an area where a Micro Four Thirds camera can suffer. But if you know about that when you go out in the field, you can use exposure bracketing to sort of work around that. That might be a pain for portrait photographers or things like that, but as a landscape photographer where I'm setting up on a tripod a lot of times anyways, 
It's not that big a deal to take two shots, one for the highlights, one for the shadows, blend them together in either Lightroom or Photoshop, and come out with an image that sort of makes up for the lack of dynamic range. So again, while these different systems have advantages and disadvantages, as long as you're aware of those, there's frequently a tool to work around that and still capture great images. So the important thing, whether you're photographing full frame, APS-C, micro four thirds, know your camera system, what its advantages are, what its disadvantages are, know to how to compensate for any disadvantages, take advantage of the advantages, and you'll end up with a great system. And where you can really improve your skills as a landscape photographer is not from bumping up from a micro four thirds to a full frame camera or a crop sensor camera to a full frame or anything like that. All of these cameras will let you practice the skills that will really improve your photography the most. The ones that come to mind most, exposure fundamentals, learning how to use the histogram, learning how to use shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and how all three of those interact with each other to influence that exposure and influence that histogram. You can practice that on any one of these cameras, any three types, and that knowledge will pay off no matter what camera system you use and will be applicable to any of those camera systems. And that's something, getting those consistent, knowing how to get those consistent exposures will do more to help your photography by the time you get it to editing than almost anything else, having a strong foundation there. Any of these cameras will help you do that. You're not being held back by not having the latest, greatest full frame camera. Next up, you've got composition. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you have for composition. This is learning to see creatively, learning to compose your image in the camera, regardless of camera sensor size, to create those interesting scenes. Those are what's really going to get people drawn into your photo. Not what camera did he shoot this with, but did you compose an interesting scene? Again, that's something you can do independent of camera sensor size. Practice those compositions, learning that composition, Pairing it with a good exposure fundamentals is going to do more to improve your landscape photography than an upgrade from one camera to the other or not going out because you think you have the wrong camera. Learning to see the light. We've talked about exposure and getting a good exposure, but what about light? Learning how to see light, how it falls on the trees, how it falls on that mountainside, how it maybe dapples across a mountain valley. Seeing that light, really seeing what's interesting, what light is interesting, what light isn't interesting, that's all stuff that any camera looking through the viewfinder of any camera you can practice with regardless of sensor size. And learning to see that light and noticing what's an interesting pattern, what's not an interesting pattern, what, how does the light help draw my attention somewhere, take my attention away from somewhere, all of that, all of that practice can be done on different cameras, different camera sizes, different sensor sizes, and again, learning to see that improves your photography more than the sensor size. So it's up to you as a landscape photographer to choose the right camera for your needs and your budget. If you're a beginner landscape photographer, your needs may not be great yet and your budget may be limited. And you may find yourself using a micro four thirds camera or an APS-C camera because it fit in your budget. You may have been doing this for a long time and you may be trying to eke every little advantage out or make your time out in the field a little easier. You've got budget and you know what your needs are clearly and you see definitive benefit to moving to full frame, then going full frame is fine. There is no wrong answer. The key here is don't feel like you can't get out and photograph and capture great images because your camera's holding you back. Any of the disadvantages with these cameras can typically be worked around in some form or fashion and it might take a little more time in the field than it would otherwise, but the key elements that we've talked about before, exposure fundamentals, composition, seeing the light, photo editing, Time spent on those with any camera is gonna grow your landscape photography more than worrying about what sensor size you have or saying you can't do something because you're not on a full frame camera. So hopefully this video was helpful. I thought it was important because I hate to hear photographers getting discouraged because they're saying my camera can't do this so I can't do that. And I just really think it's important to put that camera aside, focus on the skills you can work on, with your camera you have and get out there and start improving your photography. Don't let the camera hold you back. There's no reason in this day and age that the camera itself should be what's holding you back from growing your landscape photography. So if you liked today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.